We're in the synagogue in Capernaum. This is called the White Synagogue that was actually built on top of the original synagogue that Jesus declared these words in John 6. He said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. So you can imagine what the people were thinking because they said the Jews therefore quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Furthermore, who would want to eat the flesh of a man? And so I was thinking about all the offerings. When you go back to Leviticus chapter six, it's talking about the sin offering. The priest who offers it for sin shall eat it. In a holy place, it shall be eaten. In the court of the tabernacle of meeting, Everyone who touches its flesh must be holy. And so I'm thinking that was the priest in the time of Jesus in the second temple period. And today we are the kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So we are the ones that eat this flesh of Jesus. And I'm just thinking about back in the days when the people came to the temple to give their offerings and sacrifices, it was only a rich man that could actually give an animal. Most people actually gave grain offerings. And so isn't it appropriate that Jesus said, my flesh, because he's talking about the bread here, because they had just been talking about the bread. Just before that, all these people came to Jesus. They had just witnessed this miracle of the loaves and the fish. And so they came to see another miracle from Jesus. And they're talking about the manna from heaven and all of John 6. But then he goes to say, I am the bread of life. Anyone who eats my flesh will have everlasting life, which is actually contrary to the temple where they were sacrificing the meat. And did that give them everlasting life? So they understood this concept, but I was just thinking of how, you know, Jesus made it so that even the poor could have everlasting life. We don't have to give a bull and goats or a ram for our sin offering. Remembering that actually a sin offering is for unintentional sin, you know, and, and the priest would have a part of this. Because there's so much that we do that we don't even know is sinful. But Jesus made a way for us to be cleansed. And it's, it's so holy, like it says in Leviticus, when the priests, you have to be holy to eat this meat. And so when we come to the Lord's table to eat the bread and the wine, we too must be holy before we eat it. We have to cleanse ourselves. We have to forgive anyone who has hurt us or extend forgiveness before we can even come to the table to eat. We have to be holy and pure before his eyes. Nothing standing in the way. Sin is what separates us from God. And so whatever we can do, we have to release that. But for all those things that we don't even know where we've sinned, Jesus has covered us with his sacrifice. And so it's just amazing to be in this synagogue. Well, just below us would have been the synagogue where Jesus actually brought this teaching out. And many people after that had a very hard time following him because what a thing to say. <laughs> and so many deserted him at that point. But it's the same today. Many people don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. It sounds ridiculous that you would take these sacraments, a piece of bread and some wine, and to remember his sacrifice. It, it really looks like a foolish thing to the world. But once again, those of us who believe it is the power of God. So I encourage you to take the bread and the wine often. You know, it says in the word, the commandment that God gives the most in the word of God is to remember. 
And that's what Jesus said. He said, remember me as often as you take this bread and wine. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we can take communion every day. It is powerful when we agree in faith that this indeed has become the flesh of the Lord Jesus, believing that there is the power when we remember his death and resurrection. But it certainly brings us into a deeper revelation, into a deeper relationship with our Lord Jesus who died for us as the sin offering on the cross, who fulfilled every sacrifice that's spoken about in Leviticus. And so I encourage you, take the communion meal often. It is the power of God.